versus hello and welcome everyone today we're going to be talking about the question that we see raised in a lot of uh groups of vanguard and just in general and vanguard threads and whatever of creativity versus consistency and this is going to be in relation to choosing decks for tournaments so not deck building but just choosing what deck you want to play first of all let's go over consistency in my opinion this is the easier explanation because it's pretty self-explanatory but the obvious pros of it one is that the deck is always well tested and it's not just well tested by you it's well tested by a lot of people you see it in a lot of you know tournament results like night rose or gear chronicle you know that kind of thing and it's also known to perform well it has a lot of good matchups and less bad ones and because you're aware of all this it's a well tested deck and therefore you can feel pretty safe taking it into regionals because you know you've got as long as you've got preparation with that good deck you're usually going to be fighting against a lot of matchups now the main cons of it are that everyone prepares against it it's like when you prepare for regionals you're going to be facing off mostly against the meta decks because you want to be prepared for what's going to be mostly there against you and therefore when you're playing those uh, much more consistent decks your opponent will usually know how to fight against it and they'll do their best to beat you rather than if they were fighting a road deck and if the opponent is more skilled than you then chances are even if they don't have a more consistent deck they're going to be able to beat you out just because they know the matchup that well because they test against it that much now on the other hand with creativity uh the pros are one and most importantly is the element of surprise now a really good example for this entire creativity thing and kind of what inspired this video is actually uh the singaporean top of the uh, bwc recently or the BCS as it is called now, which is that of the Grade 2 Jewel Knights. So nobody expects Grade 2 Jewel Knights as their opponent, especially in a best of one setting. You're just like, oh, it's Jewel Knights, should be pretty easy. And then they keep riding Grade 2 over and over and over again, and you're like, ah, damn it, I can't do anything. But, you know, you just keep, like, you keep playing against different people with this deck that they keep seeing for the first time, and that element of surprise catches each and every one of them off guard until you eventually come top four. And this unexpected factor also ties in with being anti-meta and obviously, you know, being able to counter the meta means that you're going to be able to win most of your matchups as long as you get paired up well. Now the cons are that after this first impact of the first surprise, it really is not that good anymore. Because when you play the same creative deck over and over and over again, your opponents just get adapted to it or for example even though it won in Singapore people in other regions are trying the same deck and they're like oh this isn't doing anything and you know when they say that it's not doing anything the main response they get is like yes because people at the event didn't expect this deck and they didn't know how to play against it and that's why you know when somebody else takes it and it's an expected deck because it's already topped it's just not going to work because people already know how to fight against it even though you know it was a element of surprise before and obviously, because we're talking about more creative decks, chances are it's going to be less consistent in terms of beating each matchup, while a consistent deck can beat, you know, most matchups, while a more creative one will probably not beat as much. So once that element of surprise is gone, then you're really not doing that well. Another problem is that, which is pretty well related, is that when you go to, uh, to a tournament with a more creative or anti meta deck, you know, it's usually going to be geared towards some main matchup, like countering Link Choker or countering G Dex, that kind of thing, you know, we've seen it in the past. And then it's going to do well if you keep facing off against the opponents that you prepared this deck against. But if you keep fighting random rogue decks that use limit breaks, you know, then you're not going to be doing that well either. So these are like the two kind of opposing sides and their pros and cons, but it is possible for the two to mix. So for example, if you use like a very common starter for like, you know, any kind of clan, like whether it's Grand Blue or Gear Chronicle, and then you, you know, you start off kind of similar to how other decks, other con consistent decks of the same clan start, and then like your upper grades, like grade 2s and grade 3s are different and your strides are different, and then your opponent gets completely caught off because they thought they were fighting against one deck, and suddenly you changed all their expectations and they're fighting against something else. So I hope this uh, kind of like a discussion more than anything uh, helps to understand the differences between, you know, a consistent deck and a much more creative deck. And, you know, kind of it might seem a bit self-explanatory, but, you know, I still felt like it was worth getting it out there. So now bringing it to the comments, what do you guys think is the better one to take? Whether it's a more consistent and well-tested deck that you know you're going to be fighting against most matchups with, or a more creative deck geared towards, you know, being a bit more anti-meta and fighting off against the main 
decks, but then, you know, it's kind of like a one-hit wonder. If you do well with it in one tournament, you pretty much have to pre prepare a new deck for the next one, and you're gonna have to keep doing that until, you know, you're happy, essentially. So, would you rather bring something well-tested like Night Rose, or something completely surprising like the Grade 2 Jewel Night Rush that we saw in Singapore? Make sure to let me know in the comments, and I will be reading through them as well. So, this is just a little topic that I wanted to kind of go through with you guys. I felt like after the Singapore results came up with the Jewel Knight uh, Grade 2 Rush, I really wanted to, to talk about this topic, because it's been done before, but, you know, it's still kind of interesting, so I thought you might, guys might enjoy it as well. And that's gonna be pretty much it for me, so, once again, don't forget to leave your responses in the comments, and I will be looking through them. And apart from that, I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.